I love missions, as you know, and this is Mission Sunday. At, at the end of the service, we'll be taking our offering, and we always talk about our tithes and our offering. And then on the first Sunday of every month, we talk about missions. And the reason that we've always done missions on the first Sunday of the month is because for so long, people used to always get paid uh, on the first of the month. And I always felt like first fruits, you know, I always thought that makes sense. People get paid, and that's when... That's when we should talk about what's important to the heart of God. And so missions has always been the first thing that we talked about each month around here. And so we always remind you on the first Sunday of the month to remember those missionaries that you are sponsoring and that you've pledged to support. They, they count on that. Uh, even if it's $5 a month or $15, whatever it is, they're building a budget and they count on that. And they're so appreciative. And so I always bring this to our attention to remind you of those commitments that we've made to missions but we have a lot of missionaries right in our church, and it's really cool. We have some that are that the Lord has taken out of here, and they're all over there. We've, we've got people that are out of this church that are in Czech Republic. We've got them in Costa Rica. We've got them in Honduras. We've got people all over the place. Uh, but we have some that are right here in our own church because we're not just trying to reach out there. We're trying to reach around here, too. And there are various ways that we do that. You know, sometimes we, we talk about a level up and we talk about life source and we talk about some of those things. But there's also a ministry over there on the campus of the University of Arkansas that is called Chi Alpha. And it is the way that we are reaching students both here and abroad. I mean, they, they are reaching students from, they're coming here from all over the world and uh, they're connecting with Chi Alpha, getting to know about Jesus. And, they take, and then they take that, that message of the gospel when they're finished here, four years, five years, however long they're here, they take the message back home with them, and they spread the gospel message in those other countries. And um, we have a couple of, of Chi Alpha missionaries here that have been a part of our church for a long time. How many years have you guys been here? 21 years. They have served as missionaries to this campus, and this has been their home church. Every few years, we get a chance to hear from the Petties, but it had been a while, and uh, it's been about a year ago I started thinking, man, I hadn't heard from the Petties lately. And it's time that, that they came up here and tell us what they're doing. And so uh, I want Tim and Lisa to come up here and just share with us uh, whatever the Lord puts on their heart. And they're going to take a few minutes and talk to us about what they're doing. And, and, they're going, and if I know them any, any way at all, both of these guys are preachers. They're both ministers. So if I know them at all, I know that whatever they say, you're going to hear the word here. And so uh, I appreciate them. Would you put your hands together? This is Tim and Lisa Petty. And Matthew, stand up, Matthew. Come on. How long have you been here, Matthew? 21 years? So he was coming here four years before he was born. So that's pretty cool. That's quite a trick. All right? I really hope I turned this on. Did I turn this on? Okay, good. Uh, thank you, family. You guys are family to us. We've been here for a while. Uh, some of you have been here longer than we have. Some of you don't even know who we are, and that's fine. Uh, my name is Lisa Petty, and um, I just want to thank you for allowing us. Thank you, Pastor D, for allowing us to come here and, and just share a little bit about what we do. Um, I love what God allows me to do with the students at Chi Alpha. Um, I love that God allows me to mentor young ladies and, and just to live life with them. You know, And I love that God has... has called me kind of in a different way to be able to do what it is that I do. Um, we're not just here to build Chi Alpha up. That would be very selfish. We are here to build the kingdom of God up. We just happen to use Chi Alpha. Um, our mission field is the University of Arkansas. That's, that's where we go, and that's where we service. Um, but I do have a lot of people ask me a lot of times, how did you get called into Chi Alpha? How did you, you know, how did you know you were called to do what you, you're doing now? And you have to think about what the word calling means. In Latin, it actually means a vocation. So my vocation is to reach out to young ladies um, and, and share life with them and teach them what the word of God says, you know. And so I didn't get this giant calling where the, the heavens split open and God spoke my name and said, at this time, at this place, you're going to start, you know, um, ministering for me. It was more like, hey, how about you do this for me through other people? Hey, how about you take this class? Or, hey, how about you do this? I think you'd be really good at this. Or, hey, why don't you help alongside over here and, and help me do this? And each time I was asked to do this over many years, I just obeyed. And I just did what I was asked to do. 
And it was like every time I was asked to do something, I, I got to do something else, and I got to do something else. And so my calling is my vocation. Be, my calling is, is being obedient to God. And that's just not for me. That's just not for missionaries. That's for all of you. We are all called to make disciples. What is, what is the, the purpose and the mission? Matthew 28, 19 is what we do. We go and we make disciples. But we don't just make disciples. We make disciple makers. And so what do I do? I'm obedient to what God says. And then he allows me to get to do what I get to do, which is, which is reach out to all kinds of students, not just students from here, but students from other countries. And it's an amazing, an amazing opportunity. And I just want to encourage you guys, if, you're, if you feel stuck, you're not really sure what you need to be doing or you feel like you should be doing something else or you're just not really sure, ask yourself this question. Am I, have I been obedient to the last thing God asked me to do? Am I doing that? Because he's not going to move you forward until you're obedient. His word is very, very clear. If It's an if-then thing. If you'll do this, then I'll do this. And he says, if you will be faithful in the small things now, I can trust you with bigger things later. And if you will be faithful in the things that are other people's and help them, then one day, if you'll do that, then I will give you your own. So just kind of look at your vocation and what are you doing. Okay, I just wanted to encourage you today. Thank you very much. That's my angel right there, um, no doubt. I mean, and this morning, gather, grow, go. We've heard all about that already. But before I even uh, begin the PowerPoint here that I want to share with you guys, I want to just uh, remind you of something of God's Word. Uh, God's Spirit was moving and touching hearts just a few minutes ago in the house. But, you know, Proverbs 24 says that a righteous man may fall seven times, but he rises up again. A righteous man may do that. There's a difference between conviction and condemnation. Condemnation pushes you away from the presence of God. Conviction says, come on back home. You blew it, but come on back home. There's a blood of Jesus Christ that washes you. And, and it's just a repentant prayer that brings you right back into that presence of God. No doubt that curtain was ripped from top to bottom and saying, come in. It wasn't ripped from bottom to top. In the Old Testament, we read about the temple. We couldn't go into the holies of holies. But we can do that now because of the blood that was shed for us. I just wanted to remind you of that. A righteous man may fall seven times, but he rises up again. The enemy wants to hold you down, but you rise back up under the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, so, I mean, uh, gather, grow, go is what we've heard for a, a couple months around here. And there's, uh, uh, I want to emphasize another point of that uh, as I begin telling you five good reasons why each and every one of us should emphasize international ministry, uh, university ministry, all of it uh, coming together under the umbrella of Chi Alpha. Uh, ga uh, gather, grow, go, and reproduce. Reproduce. Maybe just not with a fallen angel, but um, my wife says, please don't tell that. Don't say that dumb joke. I mean, it, uh, so you haven't even listened to the sermon yet, Tim. You don't even know what his point was. Um, but definitely, I mean, uh, there's people on that campus. There's people there that God has placed us with that will never enter into the uh, church walls, no doubt. I mean, just curious, just for sure numbers, if you've ever had any connection with the Chi Alpha ministry locally or at all in your your past before you came to Fayetteville, can you stand up? Here's some fruit of that's came out of it and has come back home, and no doubt. If there's anybody that's ever had any connection whatsoever outside of our borders, maybe you're born outside of the U.S., please stand up. International. Okay. Samaria has come home, no doubt. I mean, and so uh, there, uh, no doubt there are students that will never enter the church walls unless they're first touched where God has planted them. No doubt that our great mission field is just that. It's um, it, it emphasizing the evangelizing the, those that will never enter. Uh, whether it be the international student that grabbed his first cup of coffee in front of the Chi Alpha house and that was from the Middle East and late, that later on ended up saying, I don't know how to talk to your God. How do I do that? Ended up denouncing Islam. Or whether it be the, the, uh, the Nairobian Kenya that actually ends up staying with us in our ministry facility many years ago. Or whether it be the ambassador daughter from Nigeria that actually was with us getting her PhD. These 
are all individuals that has crossed our path. I mentioned internationals because my heart does bleed that. But you know, if you're going to reach a community, if you're going to reach Fayetteville or Washington, D.C., any other part of the United States, where you want to start is not always the banker, the Hollywood director, or even the president. You don't start there. The greatest influence in a community is still sitting in a chair. Because surely before they become the banker, before they become the president, before they become the Hollywood writer that writes out the next world movie that spreads around the world, like Star Wars or whatever it may be, they are a student. If you're going to touch the community, you touch it while still being shaped here. We only have four good years to reach this great mission field. Then they're leading in the community. You want to see what happens if we don't touch that community? Something else spiritually will touch that community we call the University of Arkansas. And what happens if we don't touch it and within four years? Click, clicks, CNN, Fox, ABC News, all of them can report what's, what's happening. Because four years ago, it wasn't touched as much. So just come with me a, just a little bit further uh, on this path and you know, gather grow and reproduce. As Lisa said, Matthew 28. Matthew 28 is the Great Commission. If, if your general gives you an order and says, go, go reproduce, and which he did. Jesus Christ says, go reproduce. And, and you don't? That would make you a disobedient soldier. So if Jesus himself says, go reproduce, not just go, but actually reproduce, and you don't reproduce, there's an issue there. If a couple is trying to have a baby and they can't, there's a reproduction problem. If you're a follower of Christ and you don't reproduce, there's a reproduction problem spiritually in your life. And, and it's not about the super evangelist. It's, not, it's about the faithful disciple maker. Jesus picked 12. So if you can find at least 8 to 12 in your life that you dump your life into and it makes a difference. And you're teaching them how to teach others how to teach others as 2 Timothy 2.2 emphasizes. 2 Timothy 2.2 is just that itself. Four generations show up right there. It's reproduction that takes place. A reproduction has to take place. If it's not, it's a dead sea. So yeah, you are, you are uh, actually leading or actually going to a small group. Maybe you was in a small group. Maybe you was in a journey class. And maybe then you received all this great, great stuff in your life. You've heard. Now it's time to reproduce. If you only receive, it's like the water flowing into the dead sea. The lowest part of the earth. It goes nowhere. It has no value to anything else after that. Don't be a dead sea. But instead, disciples reproduce. Let that fresh life come through your life. I want to emphasize another point here. The international ministry that I started out with, with very, very clearly is a missions in reverse process that takes place in Chi Alpha. When they get here, uh, God's plan is that they would end up probably going back home eventually. Most of them do. You know, there's an area that theologians says there's 62 different countries that makes up what you and I would call, the theologians would call, the 1040 window. And that's 10 latitude and longitude all across makes it look like a rectangle on the globe. In that area of the world, you have the, the poorest, you have two pennies out of a dollar ever reaches those areas of the world, but 95% of the people that's never heard of Jesus Christ is from that area of the world. And nobody's necessarily living their life to go there. The 1040 area of the world. But God himself is still bleeding, wanting them to know who Jesus Christ is. Every 24 hours, 458 people are martyred in that area of the world that do stand up for Jesus Christ. This is a real thing. And God says, you know what? If I can get them over there next to Trinity, if I can get over there in the hog territory in Fayetteville, maybe, just maybe, they will hear it and take it back home. God's doing this, yet 120 nations at the U of A. In the U.S., 1.1 million international students are studying on our campus. Half of them, 50% from that area of the world. They could come from 212 different nations. The same place that this church is affiliated with, Assemblies of God. They could come from all of those churches. They could come from all over the places. But they're coming from the same area that doesn't know Jesus Christ. There's a reason. 
If that many people packed up out of California and came to Arkansas, we'd be saying, what's going on? Church, what's going on is God says, my people, my heart. In closing, I want to emphasize this one thing. And I'm going to bring um, uh, Chris up here and Pastor D up here with your calculators. And I sent you a text earlier. Yes, yes. Yes, Lisa can help you, or you can use my phone. Okay, uh, he's going to share the phone with you over here. Okay, just bring your, bring your calculator up here. To emphasize the point of what I'm saying, the faithful disciple maker next to the super evangelist. We'll call Pastor Darren... The super evangelist that goes out this year, he's going to reach 150,000 people for Jesus. That's a, that's a pretty good year for a super evangelist. I mean, definitely this is happening. But we'll call this guy here the faithful disciple maker, the journeyman. He only gets 12, though. The second year, he, those 12 are reaching 12 others. 12 times 12 is... 144. But how much is yours the second year? 300,000. 300,000. Wow. Super evangelist is knocking it out. The third year? 1728. 1728. 1,728. But the, the third year? 450,000. There's no catching up. It don't sound like. Addition. That's what he's doing. He's adding. The fourth year? 20,736. Is there any catching up? 20,000? The fourth year? 600,000. 600,000. Wait a second. There's a curve being taken here. 600,000. And the, and the fifth year? 248,832. 248,000. And the fifth year? 750,000. 750,000. The sixth year? 2,985,984. The six years, the faithful disciple model, 2 million. And what are you on in your sixth year? 900,000. Not even a million yet, and he's already done it. In six years, church, if we do God's multiplication instead of man's addition, we can reach the world. Year 10, the world would be reached if we would only do what God said and not be that dead sea. We have received so much, it's almost like a vaccine. It's like, I've got it, I know it, now let's live it, church. Multiplication or addition like man. Church, my challenge for you this morning is this, to realize... Uh, the uttermost parts of the world, 212 nations. But you know, in the beginning, over 100 years ago, we could not do that. So different fellowships, different movement, people came together and said, let's go reach the world, fulfill the great commission, making disciples. And they said, we can't afford to send a man to China, Africa, anywhere else. Instead, what they did, they said, I can give five, I can give 10. And before you knew it, there was a faith promise. A faith promise is just this. By faith, if God doesn't provide, then I can't give to the missionary. By faith, I'm saying I'm going to give 25, 50, 75, 100 to that missionary to go do that work. And that's how we have been in 212 plus countries. That's how your movement is that itself. And I'm asking you if you would partner with us this way. Come visit with me on the table. There's the notes of what I've just said is on the table in an envelope with a faith promise in it. I invite you to come partner with Lisa and I as we reach that great mission field. Thank you. Amen. Wow. That a... That'll kind of wake you up. You see it that way, right? 